judging from all the critics' reviews that have been coming out of the Lord of the Rings Rings of Power Season 2, you'd think that you're in for a really bad time. And these are the actual critics that nobody likes and nobody believes that are leaving these reviews. Now, I've recently done a review on Galadriel and why she sucks because we have some outlets coming out saying that people hate her and for some reason people are astonished as to why. At most, the character is just boring and generic. A far cry from how she was elegantly featured in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I mean, she was so beautiful and mysterious and elegant that I actually came away remembering specifically her above everything else, especially when you think about elves. When I think about elves, as much as I love Legolas, she's the first person that comes to mind. It's so crazy when I realize that this is the same actress who played this woman in the stupid Borderlands movie. Good grief, what happened? It's not the same. But anyway, here we are. My brother, Finrod, and my husband, Celeborn, was his name. Okay, hold, hold on just a second. Wait a minute. Have you ever lost someone close? My Finrod, and my husband, Celeborn, was his name. Uh, <coughs> um, uh... Excuse me, bitch! All of that aside, with all of the disjointedness of the storytelling, which I do explain somewhat in my video on Galadriel, I have to say I'm one of the people that was willing to give the show a chance, and, uh, I liked it? Slap! Those the words never managed to escape your throat. Quarter day's ride. Did you say ride? Trust me, I'm well aware that a lot of it has to do with me not knowing almost anything about the lore at all. And even then, I can understand that there are some serious issues with this show. It's one of those things that you didn't mind watching because it was on and you're like, I just want something fantasy. And then you sit down and you think about it and you're like, that was actually very uninspiring. And I think I was mixing this up with Wheel of Time or something. Wheel of Time was okay. It, 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 until it wasn't. And this is kind of like that. And now we're having these people kicking against the prick because I guess they see the other critics are like, it's horrible, it's bland, and they're like, D -d -d what are you guys talking about? Obviously, we're not watching the same show, but for them to say, brah, like, come on, like, were you really this obsessed over people clicking on your article because you came out and decided to make the bold-ass claim of season two of Rings of Power being so much better than House of the Dragon? Huh. You sit on a throne of lies. This person who looks like a, a Bitcoin or like Dollar Tree version of Mark Zuckerberg says that the most expensive show in TV history, The Lord of the Rings prequel, has a major creative glow up in season two from storytelling to visuals, Middle Earth to uh, Westeros. He's saying Middle Earth is better than Westeros. <laughs> That's not really saying much. Like, I mean, I would hope things would get better because the first season was ooh, rough. And that's saying something, especially when you consider how much money went into making this thing. It made the elves look like your ordinary person from freaking Walmart. But to say it's better than House of the Dragon? You see, everything that you say from this point forward just... I gotta take it with a grain of salt because your literal first word in this this article is hunky, followed by Sauron. Hunky Sauron. Really? That's what you're leading? That is literally, I think I'm lying. Yup, yup, that is, <laughs> that is literally the first word of this article. So I think from watching the, the article, from reading it, you don't even have to go very far to know that this person's viewpoint probably isn't that credible because if that's what you're leading with, then I strongly doubt the credibility of this title and this article. But it seems like a lot of people only care about Rings of Power so long as they could ship the characters. I'm not saying this is everybody, but there's a niche sect of the audience that are predominantly interested in this alone, which not saying anything is predominantly wrong with that, but I gather the kind of writing, the quality of the writing or the lack thereof is a clear demonstration of the audience that they're going for. <laughs> You have no choice. Without me, your people will fade. And the shadow is spreading darker to cover all the light. We need nature. I should let him see. I see that you are wrong because the elves cast you out. They cast you out for daily to beckon for a few petty soldiers. What will they do when you tell them that you are my ally? Will you tell them that Sauron lives? 
Because of you! You will die because of me! It seems like the earlier Galadriel might have shared some similarities with Sauron. Or maybe even shared his desire to conquer Middle-earth? Hinting at a potential alignment in their motives? Kind of like we see play out in their romantic moments in season one of the Rings of Power? Thank you for pulling me back. Unless you pull me back first. Huh? And even though I still like Rings of Power, don't get me wrong, I know how stupid it is. I like it because anything is better than the freaking Acolyte. The people who love this and are shipping Sauron and Galadriel, I'm sorry, aren't the ones that really look any further than the surface level when it comes to the quality and coherence of the writing. You like this? Now I know this may seem entirely crazy to everyone watching, but wait till you hear the reason why. Number one, I like fantasy. Number two, I don't know the lore. Number three, I kind Kind of sort of like Elrond in this one, but the story is kind of frustrating. When it starts out, you see the pretty colors and then you just sit there and even if you try and to take people's advice and attempt to turn your brain off, it just keeps turning back on and saying something isn't right because half of what happens in this freaking show makes absolutely no freaking sense. But the main reason I can say with all bravery in front of all of you as to being my reason why I like the show is because <laughs> I'm rooting for freaking Sauron, bro. This show is written like he is the main character. He's the only likable character in this and that's saying a lot. I'm so confused. I remember watching this and I'm like, I even said to my husband, I'm like, are we supposed to be rooting for Sauron? Because that's the way that they're writing it. So I'm really confused and because I don't know the lore of Lord of the Rings, maybe a lot of it rolls off my back. So I'm coming at this from someone who didn't read the books. I've watched the movies, but that was so long ago and I was basically underdeveloped with my brain. So I remember Sauron being evil, but you wouldn't know from watching this. Like you get some hints of it, but it's just like, I'm a vampire and I'm a victim and I shall have my revenge. And that's basically what this is. We're rooting for Sauron to get his revenge and actually rooting for him to take over the good characters. I cannot even... Okay, but good lord, I'm not gonna lie, the show is freaking bizarre. So let's delve into it and have a good adventure, because this is freaking comical. The now is where? The evil is gone. Then why is it not gone from in here? Because you're evil, Galadriel, obviously, and your hands are gigantic. Good lord, is that a prosthetic hand? I don't think so. Jesus Christ, girl, get, a, get your blood pressure checked. <laughs> so pretentious i'm dead so where we left off they, they give us a recap at the beginning right where we left off they made all three of the ring and then we see sauron or as the freaking article guy puts it hunky sauron because that's all that matters um heading back to where the orcs were i'm guessing forgive me if i don't readily recognize the places and the areas because in game of thrones you have a better idea of where people are but for some reason it's confusing for me here forgive me it just could be because i'm stupid but then we get this uh story and i'm guessing this was a long time ago and this is sauron or what he looked like before and of course they changed the act ew sorry um, they changed the actor for Adar to a more handsome looking actor, maybe because they're thinking, hey, villains all need to be hot because we need the female audience and the gay man audience to want to suck their cracks. So make them look pretty. And if they're pretty, you know how pretty people are when the guy is super, super banging? You're not going to care what's coming out of his mouth. You just care how much of his imprint is swinging around in his pants and how his mouth is moving, not really what he's saying. And that will be enough to distract everyone. Except the majority of the audience that watches this don't fit into the category who would be attracted to people like this. So it doesn't even make any sense. And those of us looking for entertainment, gross. Sorry, I don't know why I keep doing that. Um, yeah, we, um, we actually want the story to make sense. So they're in far, far, far what the frick are these names, my guy? For, hold on. Forodwaif? For, who? Why? Forodwaif? Forodwaif? Forodwaif. Forodwaif. Okay, whatever. I'm not even gonna try. It says Dawn of the Second Age, which tells us that this was in the past. Obviously, we know that Eddar betrayed Sauron, and they have some heavy Christian metaphors in this that are completely on the nose. For I seek a new kind of power, not of the flesh, but over flesh. 
terminology in which they're speaking can be found several times in the Bible. And I guess it can be synonymous with having power over your fleshly desires and whatnot. So anyway, what he means here is having power over people. And the orcs are obviously not down with it. This is a classic case in not reading the room. Power of the unseen world. One we shall use to enslave the peoples of Middle-earth to our very will. Okay, so forgive me because I don't know much about the lore, but from what I know, the limited amount of knowledge and what I recall in the movies is that these are orcs, right? Uh, I know someone's gonna get me for this. They're gonna say, you missed everything. You didn't see what they were saying. I understand. And please call me out if I'm wrong. But aren't you just supposed to command the orcs to do your bidding? Like, why are you sitting here talking with them and wasting their time? Like, they're literally weapons that you can use. I don't really understand what the purpose of this whole thing was sitting there they're probably getting angry at him because he's, he's freaking talking and they're like bitch just give us something to do why are we what is wrong with that guy over there is his mask wearing a mask look at turnip head over here what the frick is this <laughs> i'm sorry what is that but out of the oh he's wearing a turnip okay whatever chaos we will forge a new and perfect order are they seriously stealing this from the lion king yet out of the ashes of this tragedy we shall rise to greet the dawning of a new era in which lion and hyena come together in a great and glorious future. No longer will we be hunted as the demons. Oh, Judas, there we go. All the allegories. Who broke Middle Earth, but rather worship as the saviors who finally healed it by bringing its peoples together to rule them all as one. Flanco David. So they're saying Sauron lies. Is he incapable of reading the room? He also speaks the same language they speak, I'm guessing. That's how he's able to communicate to them and understand them. Would he not have heard this? Can he not see the unrest? Okay. He's not worried because we've seen that Sauron is extremely powerful. And if this is his final form from before, then it would make sense that he's not worried about them. But then he must see that his communication skills are off or he's not reaching them and he's wasting his time. Maybe he's trying to win them over or something, but I mean, bro, time is of the essence. Doubt me at your peril. You have nowhere else to turn. The Valar will never forgive you. Elves will never accept you. Wait, Val, who? Did they do something wrong? Forgive them for what? What is going on? I'm so confused. And of course, Sauron does not see Adar just staring at him. He can't perceive. Okay, whatever. What a freaking nerf. Anything but horror and disgust. A corrupted and ignoble race worthy only to be hunted and slaughtered. Why are the orcs getting offended when they say that they see you as nothing but I feel like they're why do I feel like this is some kind of metaphor for some real world shit are they trying to equate the orcs with like immigrants or something like I'm not really sure that's what I'm getting from this and every time they have shows like this I have to always take it with a grain of salt because there's always some kind of you know underlying message which is normal it's not really a bad thing but for real the whole reason that this this speech is even taking place makes absolutely zero sense to me. I mean, the orcs wouldn't see themselves as cadaverous, but I doubt a word like, oh, people see you as disgusting would hurt their fifis. The only to be hunted and slaughtered. recognize strength if he okay what is happening i'm so confused why are they so upset are these different types of orcs than were in the movies now i asked my husband this because we watched all of what came out when the season two premiered of rings of power and apparently based on what he's saying the orcs have been around long enough now that they're their own race okay they're they're cl clearly their own race, but are they insinuating, we didn't know everything there was to know about them and they may discuss us, but we can give them character. I just can't help feel that everything else that we've seen before this point then completely retcons these things, but I could be wrong. So this guy dies because he's an idiot and all the orcs are like completely hurt now and upset. Look at that guy's face. He looks like that was my friend Bobby. How can he do that to him? How can he not just stand there and let Bobby kill him? Oh! Sauron is like, anyways, 
okay, look, I'm trying to help y'all. So if you don't, ooh, okay. <laughs> what is with his face? Future and my path, your only path. Isn't Sauron like super, is this not Sauron? Why is he trying to beseech them like he can't control them? Can't he just command them? I'm legitimately asking. Cause like I said, I don't know the lore, but from what I remember, these things are just these things that can be commanded. So I'm confused and I can't even go look it up now because I guarantee like the way that things are with these stupid shows, as soon as they release them, they're probably gonna go back to all the wiki article pages and just rewrite the history and rewrite the lore. So that if you say, this is not what was in the lore. They can say, uh, yes, it is. Here's the article. We just updated it yesterday, but this is canon now. Hayok Zambat. They look very angry. Mr. Sexy Orc over there is like, how could you, Adar? I rimmed you last night. You and I had a freaking deal and you watched him kill Bobby and then you're gonna do us like this, man? You know what? No more tongue up your ass. I am so sick to fuck of this freaking nonsense with you pink skins. <laughs> oh, sorry. God damn. Why do they have to do that? What was, why is a close up necessary? Ugh. We're we supposed to. Oh, gross. Um. Anyway, uh, our daughter is like, "All right, Sauron. I guess you're the king. You showed us. <laughs> Lickety do he. Let's get this on with." And all the orcs are like, "Well, Adar says it's okay, so I guess." Which is weird because you would think that since Adar seems to have so much more control over the orcs, that Sauron would beseech Adar to give the speech to win the orcs over, even though Sauron has power over all of them. I'm so freaking confuddled as to what the hell this is supposed to be. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> what is that? It's the way that there's no music and he just looks up like he's getting ready to freaking suck him off or something. Okay, the crown. First of all, why are there knives on the crown? And why do you trust this person? to put it on, why do you need him to put it on you? Why, what is, what is the purpose of this? I don't think I can make it through this whole thing. It, this, the more you sit down and you think about it, the weirder it gets. <laughs> you're just watching it the first time, you're like, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, I guess. Then the next scene, that doesn't make any sense. All right, I guess. Next scene, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, well. And all I kept saying, you know what I kept saying, guys? At least it's better than the Acolyte. <laughs> but maybe, you know, bar was set extremely low with that. So here we are. <laughs> I'm so dead. Oh my God. Hold on. Why? What is the, what, even the bottom of it is spiky, my guy. What in the world? What if he just said it was an accident? What if he shits himself by accident or, or, or freaking sneezes or something? And then that, look how spiky that is. Are you immune to spikes going in your head? Clearly not. Okay. So it would have made sense for him. Oh, I'm going to turn the thing over and stab you in the head. Kids. And what's with the music? <laughs> I'm so, I'm so done. I'm too tired for this, man. Hold on. Wait, it's so comical to me. <laughs> <laughs> and then why would you not stab him in the head instead? Why would you stab him in the back? on the nose much, I stabbed you in the back. But it would have made more narrative sense and physical to, to stab him in the top of the head. You wanna give him time to recognize that you betrayed him? Oh my God, how is this even allowed? How are the orcs overthrowing Sauron? How did Sauron not realize that Adar was like this? What is going on? I mean, Sauron's a badass and he's fighting, but is he not the same Sauron from the movies? Cause I'm thinking he's some kind of godly entity that has tremendous power, but then they take him out like freaking Jon Snow. He looks like, okay, that face though. It's like, damn. 
Oh God, it's sucking me off. Oh fuck. Bro, that's the face he's making. It's not me, that's the face he's making. His neck expanded to five times its original size. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is comedy. It has to be, it has to be comedy. It, this can't be the same Sauron. Maybe he's a false prophet or something saying he was Sauron, but no way. But then his blood is black and they're just stabbing him. And then, oh God. And then Adar's like, all right, that's enough. One more stabbing and we're still just at the beginning of this this is this is this is taking over dumb movie monday this is freaking hilarious man and then he dies and his black blood comes out because orcs in whatever the hell sauron's supposed to be makes black blood kicks him to see if he's alive so if he is a god is he ever really truly dead do you not think he would come back at some point and fuck you guys up is this supposed to be a metaphor for people killing christ or the devil turning against god or something like none of this makes any sense all that penetration he finally climaxes and everyone somehow through that herculean snow drift instant ice age attack with extreme area of effect they they all are somehow still alive how i don't know how are y'all still in the same spot they're alive how why hadn't they got blown out to smithereens with that kind of force of power ridiculous Adar is like, what the frick happened? They see that the guy has just come all the way out of his clothes. I mean, they literally sucked his soul dry. I know, I'm sorry, I'm being lewd, but uh, I can't take this seriously. You are free. Do orcs have honor? He tells them they're free. Okay. And they're like, oh my God, Daenerys, breaker of chains, we shall follow you. And so we get all of his bodily juices, that of Sauron, leaking into the pits and where he stays. And like Dracula, time passes. I'm guessing we don't know how much time, but it fades to black and then fades back into the same spot to let us know that I guess a crazy amount of time has passed by. And he's just waiting for life to come so he can eat the life. And that is the cutest rat I have ever seen. Not really, but the poor rat's like, oh my God, something smells like, mm, it's bussing up in this day. I'm gonna eat you. As time goes on, he eats more things. And the more he eats, is the more form he takes till he reaches the light and he manages to get out of there without any of the orcs seeing him and this poor ginger lady is in for a rude awakening when she drives over sauron's poor gooey body he eats her and the horse is somehow able to get away was he not strapped properly to this how okay so after she's eaten i'm guessing that sauron takes this form based on her dna and he's like look i'm the the young vigo mortison whatever his name is hair is on point and everything i'm guessing he took her dna because he looks completely different all right and here we are did adar not know that this was a possibility that this could happen for them to have followed sauron in the first place he must have had to be very powerful and we see him use his power throughout the show so it's very confusing to me he can also get into people's minds right we see him do that with galadriel he can alter reality why did he not do that for the orcs or for adar That way lies death, friend. And that is my path. An army of orcs moves against men. We were the fortunate ones. Perhaps the fortunate ones were the first to die. So the poor old man is like, oh no, he's a young lost brethren. I must fix him. And I feel bad because the old man is so sweet and he legitimately is trying to help this guy. He says, he I could see the long lost stare in your eyes. You've seen some dark things. You're going through a lot of hurt. Why don't you come with us? You can keep chasing death or you can come with us. And there's this long thing drawn out here. Makes it seem as though Sauron is going to choose good. And then we see the Southland insignia on this guy, the one that Halbrand is wearing. So we know he gets it off this guy. A uh, symbol of kings long dead. Your family. No, my family served them. Then why wear it? As a reminder that our fates are never certain, that fortunes can turn for even the most powerful. Grim reminder. 
Yeah, because that's what happened to you because you're a dumbass and forgot that you have powers that you can use to control people and alter reality to make them bend to your will. But then again, he doesn't because he couldn't do that with Galadriel. So he decides to follow this guy because he's like, you know, you can come with us or you can go chase death or choose to be a good person, basically. Find another path. Perhaps another life. Come with us if you like. Or walk on and keep chasing death. Choice is yours, friend. I I'm sure he knows that, Pops, but we already know that Pops wants him to come along. I wonder if Sauron decided to keep walking if Pops would have been like, hey, 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 no, you're choosing the wrong choice. <laughs> we see that he didn't because he's on a ship now with all these people. How much time has passed between this point? I don't know. How far are they away from where they were? I don't know. I have no way of knowing. They do show establishing shots throughout the show, but everything is just honestly instant to the point where you're you're confused. You don't know how much time has passed or where they are at any given time. So it's hard to even figure out the locations. And then all the people look exactly the same. And when I say they look exactly the same, they all have varying colors, shapes, and sizes. So it's not like you can even tell, hey, we're in freaking Dorne because the people here look more Arabic or Egyptian. Or we're in freaking King's Landing because the people here look German. Like there's no, there's no symbol. There's no symbol to tell us where we are. Like I would know if I climbed out of a hole and it ended up in a place with people of certain phenotypic features that look like Koreans, I would know especially if most of them look like that, that I most likely am either not in the West anymore or I'm in a specific region where all those people decided to congregate. Here, there's no telling. So if you're gonna have all the people look like they're a mixed mash of people, at least, at the very least, do a better job at letting us know what the location is or how far it is from another location. It's weird. Give us miles or something. Oh, that's where the shark whale thing attacks. Because remember, we saw Sauron when he was floating on that raft with those people. Something bad happens. Oh no. Nightmares again. What haunts you so? Sauron has nightmares? All right, cool. Of the legal. All of us have done things that we care not to admit. Not like I have. Find forgiveness. You are alive because you have chosen good. I know the sweet old man is trying to help him, but what if he's a freaking pedo, dude? Oh, everything's fine. You know, we've all done stuff now. Just, you know, choose better now. Even though you freaking tore open the asses of millions of kids back there. I mean, I'm sure your, your forgiveness is right around the corner because you're running away from your judgment and you've chosen good. That's all that matters. And it's cute and it's sweet and endearing. Unless you realize that you're freaking <laughs> entertaining a, a serial killer or a serial ass devourer. I can't say the R word because you know what? And you just know something bad's gonna happen to this old man because we don't see him on the raft with those people and of course it's Sauron we're talking about. You are alive because you have chosen good. But what of tomorrow? You have to choose it again. <laughs> and the next day. And the next. Had it been that easy, he wouldn't be evil. Like, someone's doing drugs. Oh, all you gotta do is just choose not to do drugs, okay? I mean, yes, in, in theory, that is true. <laughs> it's a little more complicated than that, but I guess in that specific setting, you know, he can't really tell him, hey, you need you need therapy, dude, or you need to go and help these people, go back and help these people. It's just, just choose good. What the guy has no concept of what that even is. What if from he was a child, that's all he's ever known. So good doesn't mean anything to him. He doesn't wanna ask him what he's done because he did tell Sauron Halbrand as he is now that you're gonna have a new life and new life means no question for all you know this poor sweet old man might be one of those child devourers i was just talking about you never know grab hold of something ah! hang on this is gonna be bad I mean, there's taking inspiration and then there's a straight up freaking stealing person. Like, come on. But I understand. Because, you know, what are the chances that people watching this have actually seen Jurassic World or a hundred other movies that have done exactly the same thing? Help me! <laughs> I'm not 
gonna lie, the first time I saw this, I was like, really, Sauron? Really? Really? They did that on purpose so we could feel bad about this dude. So we could feel bad that the old man was betrayed. And he's just like, how could you? I was nice to you, you bitch. I mean, he did say he did evil things that were really bad. Like, why are you, sh why are you shocked? Like this. Did you hope that him having lived a life of pure evil and done an unimaginable things would just up and just not do that anymore? But then again, here's the thing, right? We don't know how long these guys were traveling together, but obviously they had a good relationship enough for this poor old man to feel betrayed, which is ironic given what happened to Sauron. But it's also to show us Sauron is really evil. But is he though? Maybe he's logical enough to think, you know, I like you, but you're old and you're gonna die so it doesn't really make sense for me to waste my time trying to help you. It's more merciful that you go down with the ship. He could have given him a word like, I'm so sorry, uh, but that's not Sauron's thing. His thing is, you're dead anyway, so what does it matter? So does this shark thing just like go around and eating boats for no reason? It doesn't even seem to eat all the people. It just goes around eating boats. Like it's very territorial and doesn't want anything at the surface of the water. Anyway, it comes back and it's like, you, you human right there particularly, I really, really like you. You smell so freaking good, smell better than all the others. So since you're just, you know, hanging out here in the water, I'm gonna have a little McNugget. And then Sauron is like, all right, come at me, bro. And the shark is like, ah. Ah, and then it's like, oh no. No, he's looking at me harder. Oh no. Reminds me of that Jaxi Films thing. <laughs> and Pat McCloud or whatever his name was was saying, all you gotta do is make eye contact with the shark. It's all you gotta do, just lock in. And the shark's gonna be like, whoa, some pretty strong eye contact there, buddy. Let me back swim. I've never seen a shark swim backwards like that. I'm sure they can, but because of a human, a scary human, just... Sorry, bro. I didn't know you was gangster like that. But what? Can we stop lying to people? Yeah, it should have told people that this is, this is only for freaking demigods or whatever Sauron's supposed to be because clearly he's not god enough to prevent himself from dying by a bunch of freaking orcs. But if he has the ability to scare the shit out of this big eldritch freaking shark, why would he not? I don't understand. Like he has that ability and he's not even his final form. Why would he not do that with the orcs now or with Edar? I'm so confused. I don't know the realms of his power. It's like they're so inconsistent. They only work when the plot requires them too. Anyway, he goes to the surface, holds on to the sigil, and that's when we meet Galadriel. Oh my god. And then they're like, all right. The tides of fate are flowing. Yours may be heading in. Or out. Ew, what is that? <laughs> So you know I'm evil, super evil smile. You see that? Ha <laughs> ha, because the audience won't know, ha <laughs> ha. Can we stop doing this? It's so cringe. And then we get the entry for Rings of Power where Galadriel is, ch I thought they were playing a game or something and she's like, give them to me. And it's the way that it's filmed that makes it look like, yeah, clearly they're, they're playing. But no, she's legitimately trying to take something from Elrond. And for something so important, I'm guessing those are the rings, you would think Elrond would have it closer on his person? What if the strap gets caught on something? What if she grabs it? Put it between your freaking legs. Like, what are you doing? I thought that the ring, Sauron's ring, was the one that had that power and people were like, my precious. But apparently these rings have that same power. So Galadriel gets stopped and they usher her to the High King. High King. Harold Elrond carries three rings. A means of halting the fading and saving our people. We will discuss the rings once you have answered the question. Oh boy, here it goes. It's like that whole sibling rivalry thing. I'm gonna tell Ma, you gotta catch me first. And then they're going in and the person who says it first, you know, they're the ones who get doesn't get the beating or something. I don't know. But you'd think within this time, Elrond, obviously he had enough time, would have told the High King exactly what was going on. But he seemed to have left out very important information. Elrond just informed me your companion, this Halbrand, was not who he claimed. Yet you chose to withhold this from him and Calabrimbor. Is it 
true. Yes. Who is he? Why would Elrond not just say that? You mean that he went pell-mell going to the High King so he could be, by the way, that guy who Galadriel was with? He's not who he says he is. And in that time, you didn't think that it would be, it would behoove you, Elrond, to tell the High King, by the way, that guy Sauron. Because clearly, Elrond knows. So why wouldn't he just led with that? That's so weird. He is not what I thought. Uh, clearly, okay, we have already established that, Galadriel. Look, one thing I'll give it is that what I've noticed, they have toned down the arrogance or her portrayal of her arrogance on her face. So she's a lot softer throughout the first three se the first three episodes. I will give it that. It makes her a lot more likable to look at and a lot more likable as a person, which is not saying much because you're already a very unlikable person. But now here, she was fine before, and now it's like she's trying to just skirt responsibility. And I freaking look at her and just feel like throwing up in my mouth because and I don't mean this in the worst way possible. I don't mean like I, I I'm nauseous. I just mean it just makes me frustratingly angry because I see her and I see my mother. Like she has done the unimaginable to hurt as many people as possible because her negligence, but somehow it's never her fault. It's everybody else's fault and everyone's picking on her. Freaking narcissist. Which is the reason I did what I did. Why do you dance so to avoid revealing the truth? Exactly, but Elrond, why didn't you just tell him? Ingaram, Megan Savolaina riskiathon istoli livi. Here's the other thing I don't understand, right? And I asked this when I was watching it. I'm confused. These are elves. So we're to expect that if they're in Rivendell, wherever this place is where, where elves live, right? That every person here who's elven is going to be speaking in their elven language. So why are we hearing her switch to speaking the elven language from English? I already thought it was implied that them speaking English is for our benefit, but they're actually speaking their language. So what was even the purpose of them switching back to the elven language here? This makes zero sense whatsoever. And and who is this? Is this an older language that Elrond can't understand? But no, it's revealed that Elrond can understand. So what is the purpose of doing this? It's stupid. We didn't want to just, uh, you know, we don't even know that much. And it was too hard to rehearse. But we want to just do it so people can feel like they're watching the Lord of the Rings. So that's why we just put in sporadic, sporadic dialogue in, in elven language to let people know we can kind of speak it sometimes and remind people that we're elves. It's stupid. Stop. I will believe you when I no longer see the lie behind your eyes. Now, who is this man? He is no man. Jesus Christ. He's I'm not playing his game! I'm not playing his game! He has been masquerading as one, appearing in fair form to hide his true self. He is so wrong. Why is he acting like he didn't know? Unless he didn't know. And if that's the case, then why would Elrond feel as urgent to go tell the High King that the dude is not who he says he is? Okay, whatever. <sighs> what are they, Navi? <laughs> How could you? Of all our kind. He deceived me. He deceived you? Bitch, if you don't go sit down, you see this, this is the representation we're getting. But then again, this is the representation we're seeing. Oh my God, I did awful things and didn't listen to everyone around me. And then I got my ass clapped and uh, you know, I fell in love with someone and I knew he was an asshole when I met him and something was, he was weird, but I still liked that dick. And so I spread eagle and now I regret it. So, you know, he took advantage of me. He needs to go to jail. Like, I mean, come on, seriously, Galadriel. No accountability whatsoever. Are we being serious right now? And actually, it's funny because Elrond is the only person in this weird mad world that starts to make sense and they do it seemingly to frustrate the audience because no one listens to him. I was deceived. No, Galadriel, you were blind. Blinded by your own pride. And what frailty blinded you, Elrond? Nor Dinan. What other path did your failure, Khazadum, leave us with but this? You were my friend! Dinan! It reminds me of a video I saw recently where this woman came home and there was a nozzle stuck in her car from the gas pump. And the husband didn't even do anything. He's just like, he's laughing at it. She legit gets mad at him and starts blaming him. And that's what this is giving here. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? Why are you guys laughing? <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? Look at what I did. <laughs> you 
broke the ball. Look, she got <laughs> When I found you put gas. What? Why you have me doing it? You're the man. You should be doing it. You're the stubborn one, hard-headed. Yeah. What kind of man are you? I told I was going to do it what later. What kind of man are you? You should have been doing that. Not yeah, I told me. you I was going to do it later. Now look what happened. That's your fault. Don't blame me for that. I blame you. And it's a catch-22 because the writers are probably, this is probably the only representation they see because women nowadays don't take accountability for their actions when they hurt other people. They see that and they're like, well, that's just how women are. So we're going to write what we see, right? And then women see this and think, oh, that's, that's, how women are supposed to be, right? So then they perpetuate that because they see older women doing it. It's just strange. Are these Okay, so you understand now why I, I prefer Sauron because these, suppo these supposed good guys are supposed to be the people we're rooting for and we can't stand them. So tell me now, wh who are we supposed to be rooting for? Are they doing this thing where they're like, no, we're gonna make all the good guys bad now and all the bad guys good because it's just hotter, right? Right, Mr. High King with no fucking sideburns? I don't know what kind of hairstyle this is supposed to be. The rings, show them to me. We dare not use them, High King. He's no doubt corrupted He never them. touched them, High he King. He worked with Celebrimbor for weeks. Sauron needs to touch something to pervert it. He has influence. Okay, he touched Galadriel, maybe one more than one ways, but he didn't touch the whale shark thing and it flew away or swam away. The, I mean, Elrond here is the only voice of reason no one's listening to him. Look at him, he's aged like 10 years since the last season. We cannot know the depth of his Soon influence. Soon the last gold leaf will fall, and it will be my task to inform all Lindon our time here is ended, and the elves must abandon these shores forever. Now you inform me our most cunning enemy is rising again. If we leave now, the peoples of Middle-earth will be left to suffer under the tyranny of a new dark lord. But you never once considered that the guy who was involved in making the rings, who we now reveal to be Sauron, and he was right there while the rings were being made, has something to do with what could potentially be in the rings? I mean, it's weird. It's like, dude, if a, if a, if a bad guy shows it to my house, we're like, oh, we could save our family. And the, guy, the bad guy comes up with a big suitcase of money. He's like, well, here you go. I got some money. There you go. And you're like, yes, you know, and, then we find out this guy's a mafia boss and he's killed many people before who couldn't pay him back or that are now in debt to him because he helped them. And you now knowing this, you're like, I'm gonna use his money anyway because my family is gonna go poor and we're gonna have to move if we don't. And the whole world's gonna be upset. But then you know if you use that money that there is a 100% guarantee that will happen regardless. So it doesn't make any sense, the High King doing this. And we can only infer that maybe it's some kind of indirect influence of the rings doing it, even though he he hasn't seen them it makes no sense poor elrond those rings are more than our last hope they may be the last hope for all middle earth it is a risk we must chance to take give them to me why are the elves ears so freaking fat like not even human ears are that fat they just look really oddly prosthetic i know they are but you know what i mean elrond says uh fuck you he doesn't really but he kind of says that and he's like bro if you don't give me them rings i swear to god <laughs> are you sure this is what you want to do he stands at the edge and the soldiers are ready to take him and then she speaks elven to him again for some stupid reason both of you shut the fuck up why are you speaking elven why why They know he's gonna jump. Why are they doing this? Like, what did you think was gonna happen? This is Elrond we're talking about, idiots. Why didn't he have the people see? If they're so important to you, why, if he's disobeying you the first two times, have your soldiers seize him? Is everyone here from the freaking world of idiocracy? What is going on? That would have been funny as hell if he crashed on, if he crashed on the rock. All you hear is, <laughs> they're like, well, shit. Well, that was stupid of you. And now the rings are lost forever because we're never going to find them now. Good job. Good job, Elrond. You're sitting there with his back broken on the <laughs> I don't know why it's so funny. I was imagining stupid things happening. Mordor. Hey, Rob! in the world i'm so confused right now why is he in chains the hell okay so 
he went back and he got himself captured on purpose. Okay, here's the thing I don't understand, right? Maybe he's doing this to pretend now that he has a new face, but let's say you decide to, what is your plan? To get revenge on the orcs and Adar, right? The same ones who were able to overthrow you via attrition and physical strength. Uh, okay, what, I, what is the plan here? Let me think for a second. There has to be some logic to this. In the beginning. In the beginning. In the. In the bini. In the beginning. Yeah. In the. In. In, uh, in the. Listen properly. In, in the beginning. We saw that he was trying to talk to these freaking idiots. These, these dudes, I guess, that there's supposed to be some allegory for people from across the border, because I don't understand what else the speech would have meant. It makes no logical sense given what Sauron is, right? And clearly, he's not strong enough to do what Galadriel did in Lord of the Rings and just wave her hand and turn the orcs into freaking sandpaper. They swarmed him like flies swarm shit. And now he's put himself back before these people thinking that, what? What is he gonna do? Okay, so maybe as a cow calculated plan. I didn't think it would be to go right before them for the chance to get captured, which is highly likely, or the chance for them to kill you, which is highly likely. To do what? To do what? What are you doing? It would have been a much more thought out plan if you were like, I am your slave, Adar. I will suck your gonads for as long as you need me to. And Adar's like, will you now? I mean, I already have a lot of gonad suckers here. I know, right? I'm the number one. You don't got them teeth that can do that whole tactile dragging sensation that I like, but you know, human teeth can be a new thing for me. All right, let's get it on. I mean, I already have enough fucking husbands, bro, but let's go. How far back does your throat go? How deep can you stuff it? And this guy's like, oh dear Lord. Um, yeah, um, as deep as you need to go, daddy. And then at the very last section of the freaking story, he rips them off of his body and spits them back in his face. And all the orcs are like, oh my God, how could you? And he's like, you didn't like him anyway. And the orcs are like, no, that was our Daddy, like freaking Adar here is running some freaking husbandry cult with orcs. Bring it to my motherfucking mouth. Hmm. Get in the scene, y'all. Mm-hmm. Show you in the scene, did you? Did I ask for a strawberry? Bitch, did I ask for a strawberry? No. Huh? No, my chief. Don't you ever in your motherfucking life give me no motherfucking strawberry unless I ask for one, motherfucker. Pushing three. I'll make you get on your knees if we're not seen. So they ain't used to a pimp. Oh, these niggas. <laughs> Alexis, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Unless it's the whole plan, which to listen to make any sense, that would make way more sense than whatever the <laughs> plan. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. This is so unprofessional. I mean. <laughs> I'm so dead. How much money did they spend making this? I'm dead. Okay, anyway. <laughs> An ancient sorcerer. To instruct the elves in forging a new weapon. One you first told her about. A power over flesh. Do you remember those words? A power that will allow him to use your children as slaves in his army once more. So Adar is getting all swollen up now and he's like, shit, those are the words that he used. Being that Sauron is a great god, there's no way the man standing before me could possibly be him and I can't detect it, so whatever. And to use your children as slaves in his army once more. Set my people free and I will tell you where he can be found so you can destroy him and rid us both of his evil. No. Well, that didn't work. So of course this guy thinks that Halbran is the king of the south, whatever, southlands, and dude is like, okay, you're going to tell me what you know, or I'm going to spill them from you. I'm going to torture you, and uh, yeah, because why wouldn't I? You're in chains. You don't have anything on me, Moses. Halbran says, dude, okay, you could try to do that, but if you end up killing me, you're never going to get this information anyway. Like, there's ways that they can't get the information, but anyway. Oh, Sauron could never return, could he? No, Sauron is dead. Oh no, 
He's super worried, which means he knows that Sauron is not dead, which means his king bunghole is probably twerking right now because he made a huge mistake. But then why would he be worried, seeing as you have the entire orc army and it only took a few dozen of them to take out Sauron? Unless, of course, he makes the rings. Then, God bless their souls, we have uh, the, the Gandalf, Saruman, I don't know who this is as, but whatever, Gandalf, who, who knows? He's having these dreams, he's still wandering the desert with Nori, and honestly, at this point, I don't really know what the point of these people being in the story is. I don't know what the point of this particular them walking around the desert is. All we know is that he can't use his powers, he doesn't have control, and someone's following them and watching them. Awesome. Just a minute. We're lost. Panic is the fool's meal, Nori. We would be wiser to sup on patience. We haven't supped on anything since we ran out of snails. There's nothing to eat out here. Oh, is Jesus gonna make the fig tree turn alive again? So he has a chance to use his magic, because clearly his friend Nori is starving. Oh no. Oh no. Well, come on. You might bear some fruit. At least you could do is try. Have you forgotten what happened when last I tried such a thing? Uh, what what did happen last time he tried? Didn't he give them food? <laughs> so he did it. Oh, how'd you think? He fixed it. But before he had a little slight mishap because one person was so freaking stupid and the parents weren't doing their job to keep her safe. I should smack your faces off your freaking skulls. You asked me to do this and then your little pale child came over because you weren't being good parents and somehow it's my fault that the branch fell off of a dead tree that you knew I was at the moment shaking and stimulating and you decide to let your freaking spawn of fucking Lilith come close while I was doing this and somehow it's my fault? No wonder you thou can't grow taller. Look at her playing the freaking victim. Oh my god, I'm so scared. Shut the fuck up. Oh my god. I'm sorry I'm in my feelings, but the time I saw that and I just watched it over again just made me just as mad as I was the first time I saw it. It's just because I've seen people do that in real life. But anyway, so we have evidence that he's done this before. And yet, for Nori's sake, he is like, no, do you remember what happened last time? Do you know what's going to happen this time if you don't find us food? Yeah, a stupid little piece of shit. Try to win a Darwin Award and go under the freaking tree. She's not there anymore. It's just me. I'll keep my distance, but I'm going to starve. The both of us are going to starve if you don't do something. Anyway, he does his Christ miracle and the dead tree becomes overstimulated and Nori's like, oh my God, we can eat for days. <laughs> Why is she not grabbing them? They're just, they're just running away. Mm. Ugh. These characters are so stupid. It makes my head hurt sometimes. Why is she just letting them crawl away? Look at all of the food we have. Now let's watch it crawl into every single direction where it can get lost and bury under the earth again because that's where it freaking came from. You stupid idiot. Don't worry, let's make up the excuse that she's just very hungry and so she's not thinking with a full set. Yeah, no, come to think of it, I don't buy that either. Just up some food, and you did. Nobody got hurt. I lost control. So you need to learn how not to lose control. Oh boy, do you think, Nori? Wow, thank you for that contribution. Everything has changed now. Then they start talking about homes that they never actually had or never actually been at. And then we cut back to, uh, all these freaking names, Har Hargrove, Harland, Halbrand. The puppy! He's so cute! Oh, look at the little face! Well, we know that this. 
this dog is going to be important later. And Halbrand's still not talking. And the freaking snitch over here, Bootlicker, whatever his name is, is like, yo, our, our Adar doesn't even remember your hearer. Didn't you know about Sauron? Oh! <laughs> I don't know why I found that so funny. <laughs> I wonder how hard this guy was trying hard not to laugh. <laughs> he looks legit. <laughs> Yo, they're good actors. I could never be an actor, seriously. Like, I'm aware what's bad acting and what's not. And I probably would have been a horrible actor because I would have been cracking up at everything. And it's how everyone's so serious to on set. So then he decides to use the bell that the guy saves. I don't know why you would save food there, knowing that you want to starve this guy, but he leaves the bone there. And the puppy is like... <laughs> been his hand what if that dog was on that chain what if it broke the dog would have killed him Oh, he's gonna ask that dog for help later. Oh, so you can, you can speak languages and control things. Is this only for animals? But he enslaved the orc, so how was he able to do that, right? Must mean that he has some superpower to control things. But I'm stupid, don't mind me. I'm obviously missing some very important piece of information. So we see Elrond all dirty, hiding under the bridge, I guess, because he wants to go, I mean, he's all wet. Then we meet this old wise elf, and I call him old and wise elf because it's literally how they refer to him as. He does have a name, but you'll understand what I mean. Night comes and he goes back to his little workshop. Don't know how nobody else saw that Elrond was hiding in there. You needn't hide any longer. Master Kirtan. God, Elrond looks very worse for wear. I don't know what it is. He looks even better dirty. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, when he's normal, he's just like, okay, sure, why not? He looks like a Nickelodeon character. Now he's like, hmm, Calvin Klein commercial. See how scruffy I am? I look like I'm at death's door. That's when people really want me. Yes, I know, I'm deranged. Mm, he's back in the light now, Never mind. Bro looks like a freaking Dollar Tree Green Goblin from Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. <laughs> You know how much I sacrificed in 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 the beginning. In the beginning. Please forgive the unexpected nature of my visit, but I have nowhere else to turn. You are the oldest and wisest of our kind, and the elves are facing our greatest test in an age. See, oldest and wisest. You have to lick this guy's socks in the foot of his boot before he helps you. But this is just so we can know he's the oldest and wisest. Why? It's gonna be important much sooner than you think. So High King Elf tells this dude or woman, woman, um. I can't tell now it is like whatever Th this person that this letter that he has must be given directly to Lord Kellen Brimbor, which tells me that he's probably gonna lose it or he's gonna die or she or whatever. Sorry, is he screwing Galadriel? I'm so I know it sounds stupid, like I know I make jokes about that stuff, but I'm being serious now. Because what other reason could she have for just walking around near the High King and just having no punishment whatsoever for everything that she's done? Like at this point, knowing that she was influenced by Sauron or tricked by him, I would have her locked up under scrutinization. That's not a word, is it? Scrutiny? Whatever. I would have her monitored extremely closely in case Sauron can influence her or see through her, you know what I mean? But then again, Sauron's powerful and he's not powerful. I'm not really sure what exactly we're dealing with here in terms of his power and its limits. But one thing I know is that this woman would not be walking around next to the king. I have yet to thank you for trusting me regarding the rings. Trusting you. Sorry, why does his hair look like a freaking staircase? I can't stand it, man. It's just throwing me off. Looks like the tide is going out in two different directions. Let us be clear, Commander. You and I are momentarily aligned for one reason. Because your actions have left us no alternative. Because of you, our enemy lives. And now, because of you, the king, you're allowing her to just walk around unpunished, unscathed. It makes 
absolutely zero logical sense. Like, why? I'm not saying they have to torture her or anything, but good grief, come on. Are we being serious right now? Do elves not hold each other accountable? Are they not punished for their misdeeds? I just don't get it. There's no way for you to know you can trust her. And you can't tell me that he's using her because she's perspicacious. She knows basically nothing. She didn't even know that Sauron was with her. Because of you, we've no choice but to test the virtue of the rings. I should have you thrown in fetters and cost to the Etten Moors for what you've done. Then why have you not? <laughs> it's like he just now thought about that. He's like, uh, you know, that's a, huh, that's a good question. Unless they're banging, because there is no other reason why she would have this much favoritism. After everything, a monumental mistake she has made that cost everybody. And this guy somehow is like, yeah, I'm not gonna punish her at all. Well, why, my king? Had anyone else done this or the ugliest of the male elves have done this, would they still be walking around in your presence? No. Well, why is she? Because them golden flaps smell so freaking good at night, man. Like, I can't help it. Alucard, right? Freaking sashimi up in this bitch. You can't blame me for not wanting to deny myself of my delicacy. It's the one good thing that could come out of this. That is the only thing I could hear him saying in his mind to make this make sense. I am considering it. Are you now? I swear to you, High King, I will not stop until he is destroyed. And I have put this right. You would not be here now if I thought otherwise. You just said, okay. <laughs> um, exactly how she's supposed to put this right. Isn't that what she was already doing before? Wasn't this her whole reason for why she was following Sauron in the first place? And she put it so monumentally wrong, and yet you're gonna... <laughs> why would you give the same person? Oh my god, what is... What are these people that are writing this? Are they not members of the human species? Let me try to put into words how I feel, bro. Like, because it doesn't make any sense. So let's go over something real quick, right? She didn't listen when the High King and everyone else was telling her, hey, you need to stop following Sauron. He's not, he doesn't exist. And she's like, he still lives, no, my lives, my, oh my God, I'm gonna find him. She goes out there, does not listen, disobeys everyone's orders. And then as a result of her going on her way and doing her own thing, she falls in love with or catches the hots for someone who is Sauron and was hiding in plain sight. And she messes everything up, not to mention there's a possibility that he had something to do with why the rings were created in the first place. That is very possible. And um, so you're going to take the same person who Sauron's mind has already melded with, sort of, and you're going to leave it up to her to put things right and let her walk around with zero punishment, zero consequences of her actions. Right. Like at this point, like nobody, there's no root ritual to be like, let's cut off the tips of your ears. Like nothing, nothing, no spanking, no, no locking up for a day, nothing. You cannot tell me the other elves aren't speaking behind her back and being like, she's his whore. Because there is no way. There is no freaking way with her supercilious ass. Like, that doesn't make any sense. I know I keep saying that, but I'm literally, I'm not exaggerating. There's so much in this freaking show that doesn't make any sense. And this is just episode one, for crying out loud. Hi, King. We have not found the rings. So they're talking about how they tried to find Elrond and couldn't find him. Did he send the whole army after Elrond? He just fell outside the waterfall. Like, I mean, I guess if they went down there fast enough, but he could be anywhere. Did they search everywhere? In, in what time? How much time has passed? But anyway, now remember how I said before that in the last scene, um, the guy mentioned, uh, Elrond mentioned that, that Elf was old and wise. And there's usually a reason why the dialogue is so freaking on the nose. <laughs> well, here's the payoff. Escape is not his plan. Meaning? He spoke of destroying the rings. Elrond would seek out someone he can trust. Someone older. Wiser. Whose voice would command respect even from you. Okay. <laughs> All he needs is for someone to destroy the rings. So the dialogue kind of contradicts itself, sort of. He needs someone he can trust, but he needs someone who's older and wiser. They should have taken out the trust part because I would think that the person who Elwan would probably trust more than anyone is his dwarf friend. This is a new character. The old guy is a new character that we were just 
introduced to. There is nothing, unless I'm missing something, there is nothing previously in season one that told us about this character or the relationship that he and Elrond had or the trust that Elrond would have had for him that would make us believe that Elrond completely trusts him to not be corrupt. This guy is older and he's wiser, but there are other elves that are almost as old and are not wise. I mean, the High King himself, looking as old as he is, he's younger than this elf, but it doesn't equate to being wise. Age is not equivalent to wisdom clearly in the elven community so why would they even mention that this guy is old and wise and so Elrond would trust him because of that because he commands respect even from the king even though the king himself is old but not wise and commands respect from everybody so I don't know what the point of that dialogue is it just seems very forced anyway Elrond is talking to this guy and the guy's like are you sure this could be the savior of all of Middle Earth is this what you want to do and then Elrond's like yeah bro because if there's a chance that this is super Super evil then you know what's gonna happen man and he's like all right your father would be proud or some mumbo jumbo if one were to cast these rings into its depths they would so Gilgalad and Edladril are right outside and all of a sudden they don't notice. I don't know why they wouldn't surround the place because you know that that what's his name Elrond is probably trying to get rid of the ring. Surround the area. Why are you just in the front? Had they done that they would have seen that the old man was making off with the rings to destroy them. Let me speak with him first. Please High King. Give me one last chance to reason with my friend. Reason quickly. Oh my god. Seriously? Ay Dios mio. I, I, I don't even know what to say at this point. So uh, as I've just said, Galadriel's character throughout the series has been portrayed as someone who clearly is driven by her own personal motivations and she acts impulsively. She's not transparent with those around her, especially the High King, especially her best friend of all people, the one person you expect her to trust. And her judgment has also led to significant oversights, like having Sauron right under her nose and not having even realized it. Uh, while I'm sure this could have happened to anyone, it's more egregious it coming from her. So, you know, given her track record, it's very confusing to me that the High King would continue to trust her with such a critical mission. So now he's sending her out, like sending her in to confront Elrond alone. It just seems very, I don't know, very out of character for a leader who should, you know, prioritize the security and well-being of his entire realm over personal friendships and emotional pleas of one individual who has already proven that she cannot be trusted. What is wrong with this person? At this point in time, if his entire realm undergoes severe destruction, it would have been his own doing. You can't really blame Galadriel in the sense and that's why I said in the previous scene they have to be banging each other because ain't no way someone is this blind or or whipped without something going on look at the way she's like please hi king please can I go talk to my friend and he's like you're a criminal but well, I guess. Like, come on. That's next level simpery right there. Like, I don't even understand, but that's the only thing that could possibly make sense. It still doesn't make sense, but it's the only thing I would ever excuse. I mean, for crying out loud, the king is dumb as shit. I don't care if you're banging her walls till they're freaking dry. Elrond's actions have already raised several questions about the consistency of his character. You asked him point blank to give you the rings and he'd rather jump off a freaking waterfall and go behind your back. So he's already shown that he's not going to comply with the king's orders to the point that he even endangered himself rather than surrender the rings to his king. It's far above your privilege. One you endanger with each moment you refuse to obey. The rings, Elrond. It is a command from your king. I will not utter it again. Durdi. See what I'm saying? This dude would openly, to the king's face, defied him. And this level of defiance suggests that Elrond is beyond persuasion through gentle or diplomatic means. Especially from someone like Galadriel, who he clearly doesn't respect anymore, regardless of him being close with her. Manahir Pedetani. Han erat Durdi. I don't know why 
why they played that music when he was holding on to the rings. I don't know if he was already being persuaded, but yet he also wants to destroy them. So it's almost as though they're trying to insinuate that he was being affected by the rings as well, to the point of disobeying his king. Anyway, back to the stupid High King's decision to let Galadriel make one last attempt to reason with Elrond. I mean, that is just a poor tactical choice and it makes me wonder how this guy even got elected in the first place. Leaders, especially in like a fantasy setting like this, with high stakes like this, where people's lives are at stake, like he said, you're expected to make decisions that balance compassion with practicality. Elrond has straight up already, like I said, risk death. He would rather not listen to you. So the king allowing Galadriel to be like, oh, I'm just gonna go in there and talk to him one last time. Just really redundant. It's futile. And that actually weakens the king's authority and it makes him appear indecisive and stupid. She goes in, the king doesn't even position his soldiers at the back so that they can prevent Elrond's escape. How do you know he's in there? And when she comes in, do you not think to question where the old and wise elf is? If the king was really that concerned, he would have placed all the soldiers around Elrond's location or besieged the old elf himself or tell Galadriel, okay, you've done enough. I need to go in there. Clearly you've tried in front of my face and behind my back to beseech your friend and that has not worked. Why are you trying one last time? We're done. And if we're talking about storytelling, like I know I bitch and cry about this kind of stuff, but from a storytelling perspective, this scene also misses opportunities to build tension and conflict. Imagine if the king had sent his soldiers, right? And they were to like, I know, engage with Elrond. That would have been more dramatic. You see Elrond trying to run away with the rings. We think he's caught, then he's not. And that raises the stakes and creates deeper conflict between the characters. Allowing Galadriel to go alone undermines complexity and the chance to have a good narrative. But I see that this show is not really strong when it comes to that. So I don't even know why I'm expecting anything more. One good thing that comes out of the scene is seeing that Elrond ain't no simp. Don't you remember? We chose this path together. No, you chose it for me. <laughs> good for you, bro. Because she really did. Dude, she knew who this person was. She had discovered who Sauron was and still decided to go through with the ring. Elrond did not know or was not privy to this piece of information that would have been vital to him making a final conclusive choice. Go back on it. Was it truly to fight the darkness? Or was the darkness calling to you? Can you not see? All this may be by his design. I did what I felt was right. Oh my God, I'm getting PTSD, bro. I like when people don't want to take accountability. The first thing they say is, well, you know, I did what I thought was right, or mm, this person did it, it's everybody else's fault. You you put your soldiers in danger from the very first episode of the first season, she put her soldiers in danger physically. It's not like she went out on her own and tried to do this. You put people in danger and then you brought it back with you. So while she's talking, the king had told her reason quickly, which she didn't do. I mean, what if Galadriel is in cahoots with Elrond. The king, obviously, as I said, he's whipped. And nobody thought, hey, the old elf isn't in here. Where is he? Why is Elrond just sitting here all calm when he previously was trying to escape before to avoid people getting the ring? Nobody put that together. Galadriel and all her freaking intelligence didn't put that together. Wow, they're really playing up the dumb blonde trope with this. So old elf goes out to sea and takes the rings with him. Then we get a cut to the freaking stranger. They notice someone following them. And this scene makes absolutely absolutely zero sense to me because Gandalf dude is down here and Nori is at a vantage point where she can see this person coming enough to tell Gandalf, okay, strike them now. And I guess they're playing up suspense for us. Like you can see this little trap thing. First of all, how would that person even trip over that? The rocks aren't fed on anything and they're small enough that, oh my God, dude. And I already knew it was going to be Poppy before they showed Poppy. It doesn't make any sense. I already knew that was happening. The person who was following them, yeah, I'm like, oh, it's her. It was so freaking predictable because they're like, everyone likes Poppy. Let's put pop it back in there. And then she's having a conversation with Nori like, oh, you guys didn't go far because I guess they're like another Moses situation. This whole theme seems to be around Moses, let my people go, wandering the desert in circles, not knowing where to go, unless you read some freaking text. And Nori is asking how her family is. If this bitch, sorry, if Poppy had followed them closely not long after, how would she have had time to spend with Nori's family to know how they are? I just don't understand. Like there's some pieces of the story that just doesn't make any sense with this. I'm trying to give it the benefit of the doubt, but it's just like people are just sitting in a bathtub and there's two people and they're both naked 
and they're facing each other with their legs overlapping like a freaking yin or yang. And one person's like, I'm gonna tell a story and then you're gonna finish the story. And so the first person's like, okay, so once upon a time there was a mouse and a mouse like cheese. And then the cheese became moldy and a bird ate it. And then the mouse became moldy and turned into the bird. And then the bird became a wizard and like married the mouse and turned it into a human. And then the mouse still had buck teeth and went around killing people because its teeth were like super plasticky and it needed blood to make them into bone. And then the wizard wanted to file for a divorce because the mouse's cervix was too small to give birth to children. You know when you're high off your rockers, well I would know, but people when they're high off their rockers they often talk about nonsense. People who are freaking stoned and having philosophical discussions make more sense than the dialogue and the entirety of this freaking show. You haven't exactly gotten very far. Yes, well, we appear to be lost. Oh, so now you admit it. Oh, Isn't she the one supposed to be helping him find his home? Because he has amnesia and all that shit? I could just be wrong. It's been a while. Forgive me. It won't be for long. Look. I was sifting through Static's old book. Harfits must have journeyed this way a long time ago. Oh my god, how heavily convenient that you just happened to pull a map out your freaking baggy ass that will now get you guys out of the desert. Good thing Poppy just happened to come along and just happened to find them and just happened to just be okay and not have to run into the desert people that are also following them. That would take a lone half foot, half foot, whatever they're called by themselves and sell her off to someone far away. Good thing all those things didn't happen, right? Interesting. Is she a tracker? Does Poppy have that ability? Last time I I checked she wasn't, but I could be wrong. But lo and behold, here's the map. So if there's a map with this, no one thought to ask this before they left for the journey. I was sifting through Static's old book. Harfits must have journeyed this way a long time ago. See, there's a warning. Not to forget the words to the song or you'll just go round in circles. Song? What song? Give you one guess. Sing to me, sing to me, land far away. The walking song. I think it's some kind of directions. Our folk. Did they literally just write that in for this season so that they would have a reason for these people to have an adventure that is completely nonsensical and just acts as filler that nobody actually really fucking cares about? Past eyes of pale fire. Black sand for my bed. I trade all I've known. <laughs> I'm sorry. It just feels like there's zero scale in these worlds. As far as I know, the desert's a really, really, really big place. For fuck's sake, our land, our property, how many acres we have, you can get lost in our freaking forest. And it's not even that huge. But if someone said, here's a map, go in your forest and go roam about, you know, till you find an exit, I would get lost. If the, if the song that they, they told me is saying, oh, tree with green branch with a silver string around it. You know how many fucking trees we have in that goddamn forest? How is it possible that in a place like this, where everything looks identical, that they were able to just happen to find exactly what they needed or be right in front of where they needed to be at the time they needed to be there with them having been lost? Is the desert not that big? Then why were they roaming in circles? It just doesn't make any sense. Welcome to the lands of Rune. Okay, so they showed a map there. That's nice. Can you do that all the time? So then we cut back to the old elf. And I swear to God, I wanted to tear my tits off of myself because the level of convenience in this scene, in every scene, to be honest, just makes me feel like this is comedic or this was written by some kind of chat bot. And I can't even use chat GPT as a joke anymore because chat GPT as it stands is possible of writing way more coherent stories. <laughs> freaking big back physics do you hold the ring bag over the water and something bumps you bumps the boat from behind and somehow that equates to your hand coming back in and the bag flying back over here <laughs> when a man loves a woman even the old man looks confuddled. Well, who in the fuck did you end it back in the boat? <laughs> Are we supposed to believe that these rings have the ability that Sauron's ring did from Lord of the Rings to call out to people? And the oldest and wisest elf has fallen at its feet. 
but Elrond didn't? Anyway, we switch back to Sauron and hotter version of Adar. And I guess Adar is like, okay, well, I guess I'm gonna like talk to you now. Cause like, I don't know how much time has passed either, but now I think it's time for me to like, sort of be nice. In the eldest of the elder days. Thirteen of us were chosen to be blessed of Morgoth's hand with the promise of power and new birth. So he's talking about some story before and how Sauron saved him and gave him wine to drink and blah, blah, blah. He offered me wine, red as a blood moon. He offered me wine on that dark and nameless peak. I drank it. I drank it all. Your people have been set free. Now tell me what you know of Sauron. I'm sorry, what assurance would I have that my people have been set free? I've been in a dungeon. There is no way for me to possibly know this. It would have made more narrative sense for Eddar to take Sauron outside and show him, see, your people are all gone. What does set free mean? You could have meant kill them and ate them. They're set free from their suffering. That could mean so many things. Now let's pre not pretend that Sauron actually cares about those people. He was probably just trying to make it seem like he cared about them for some reason so the guy could believe that he's the king or who he says he is. But a real person who cared about his people would be like, let me see. I want to see. I don't know for certain if you're telling the truth. Is Sauron going to do that? Sauron has returned in a new form. I swear everyone in this freaking franchise is so dumb. I can't even be mad because the original Lord of the Rings wasn't much better. I mean, apparently they could have taken the eagles and flown to their location instead of taking all that time with that journey, making things tremendously hot, like harder and making the journey like 10 times longer. I am not yet certain what shape he is taking. Then of what use are you to me? I have something you don't. The trust of the elves, release me and I'll go to them and seek him out. So you can marshal your legions to destroy him. And I suppose Adar is supposed to just let him go. He's let go his people, right? Did he let go all of them? In that case, Adar is a freaking idiot. And if he let go all of Halbrand's people, and now you let Halbrand go with no way of tracking him, what certainty do you have that he's gonna come back or not pair up with the elves and come back and destroy him? You vow allegiance to Adar. Lord Father of the Uruks. Yes. So, Adar makes him bow allegiance. Now, let me get this straight. Wasn't Sauron the Lord before? And Adar saw how easily it was for them to betray Sauron. He himself betrayed Sauron. What makes him think that it's impossible for people to betray him? So he makes him bow down and swear at Adar's feet, and Adar is waiting for him to say something, and Sauron says, doesn't say his name, but he says, I swear. I vow to serve the Lord of Mordor to the end of my days, and his. He's obviously talking about himself, and if anyone had done that to me, I would have been like, say my name. You said my name, you know what my name is, say my freaking name. Now, Adar does say, follow the guy, watch where he goes. If he goes to the elves, and then he switches sides, and he decides to be with the elves, what are the orcs gonna do then? Also, Sauron had told this old man, yeah, I'm gonna kill you when he sets me free. Oh, your majesty. All hail the king. Oh. See, it's like we're supposed to be rooting for Sauron. He is the good guy. He is the main character that we're supposed to be rooting for. They have tried so hard to pour, pour their entire passion into writing this villain that they have made him more likable than the actual characters. Because at this point, if the good guys are evil too or not very likable, then the villain's obviously gonna wait, be way more interesting anyway. So why even bother liking them? So the High King's like, well, we don't have the rings. It is what it is. Let's not even try to go after the old guy or Elrond. And also, Elrond is still sitting there with everybody. Like he's standing there in the midst of everyone about to go with them. No punishment, no accountability whatsoever, right? Elrond has defied our freaking thick necked king so many times. And yet he's allowed to just stand in his presence. Why do these elves all look like Bruv. 
Okay, you know, whatever. I'm not even gonna. So then the old man comes, and I swear, this is near the end of the episode. The old man comes in, is like, everything's I, and I swear to you, Hold on, I'm just, I'm trying to, trying to pull together. The stupidity is affecting me. <sighs> Perfection does not exist only in Valinor, High King. It is here. Who told you you could put on one of the rings? He just helped himself to it. Oh, it gets worse. <laughs> Oh, it gets so much worse. Oh my god, this is so funny. Oh, I'm having such a headache. Oh my god. Okay, we're almost done. Celebrimbor has brought it to Middle Earth. also zero reflex the king doesn't even try to like bend nobody tries to get it then one goes down to galadriel clearly it's gonna be her ring and they're just watching it happen and she's like my pressure she picks it up the king doesn't tell her hey thank you hand it over she's just like wow it's so beautiful it's calling to me like a, you know the other ring from the movie i'm gonna put it on my finger mm, penetration and the king is completely okay with this he just puts on his ring and lets galadriel put on her they're fucking they're fucking don't try and convince me otherwise that that's not the case because knowing what we know about galadriel Okay, let's excuse everything else that has happened up until this point. Her putting on one of these rings, what would ever be the reason? Her, this having been her fault and the reason why they're in this shit right now, why does she get to put on one of the rings? It doesn't matter if she's like, I wanted the rings to be in the equation. It doesn't matter. The king just allows people to just randomly put on the rings? Galadriel? Really? And he says absolutely nothing? Really? That is a man whose wife has her freaking clam walls wrapped all the way around his freaking head, squishing him to the point of no return where his brain is suffocating because it doesn't have space to wobble properly around in his skull. Oh my God. So all the trees start growing and Elrond is like, shit, what did I do all that for? See, I was right. Oh my God, the tree is coming back. So life comes back to the freaking Awa tree. Elrond looks disappointed and walks away from Galadriel. Why is he able to just walk freely to go wherever he wants. Then they all go together and they're like, oh my God, your ring is so cute. And the other person's like, right? Look at that girl. Ooh, you got that bling on. I like that sapphire. Mmm. See how it shines when the light hits this way? Ah, but check mine out, man. Look at it next contrasting the other ones that I have. Oh my God, I totally am gonna get another one to contrast this one on Etsy. And then they just stand like that for a while. Like, what is the reason? What what is the what is the re the fuck is going on? What? Are we are we done? Are we done? Oh my and they're still going. It's uh, Did they do that for the cinematic shot? Look, pose for the poster. You know when people do that when they're making videos and they're like, ooh, this is good for the thumbnail. Let me make a face real quick so I can thumbnail this. Anyway, apparently Celebrimbor notices that there's a messenger, and it happens to be Halbrand. But Celebrimbor was told not to treat with Halbrand. So he's like, I can't do it. And that's where it freaking stops. Thank God. <sighs> Oh my god. My brain is so freaking tired, man. I was so stressed today and now let me let me let me say like there's there's a few things they got right in this this season. Um they made Halbrand more no that was they did that in the first uh, they hold on. I'm trying to remember. I like the dog and Give me a second, stop. What did they do? Cinematics. The cinematics are really nice. I like the cinematography. It's actually done really well. The colors are done nicely. They toned down Galadriel's feistiness because that was getting a little bit rough. It was so annoying. She was so abrasive. Adar looks better like this, the actor that they chose as him. Hmm. Yeah, that's all I got. It's not the worst show. It's okay. And for something to kill time, I'm like, oh, it's fantasy. But the depth of this show is as equivalent as watching a music video 
of a whole bunch of different things happening at the same time and just playing it to music. There's no other depth than that other than, oh, I associate with the, the happenings of this video with the song that's playing. And that's basically what this functions as. It's simplistic, but then you also find yourself recognizing that there are glaring issues with the story. Not Even when you're relaxed and you're not thinking about anything, you're like, wait, why the hell did this person just do this a moment ago? Like this, and, and you know what? This isn't bad, if you, could, you could forgive it if it's a sci-fi show or something, but for something that costs so much money, you would think a tad bit more effort and quality would go into the writing. But anyway, here we are. That was episode one. Did you guys have fun? Wasn't it interesting? Halbrand is the only reason I like this. I mean, we all know what happened. Like, we know what happens to him, but still, I find myself rooting for Halbrand. And at this point, I'm actually wondering if they would deviate so much from the source material, or when I say source material, I mean the movies, but, uh... Yeah, to the point where we're gonna get Halbrand as the main character and he's not gonna be as evil as everyone thought he was. Or the orcs are not gonna be as evil as everyone thought he was. And it's actually the orcs and Halbrand that were right all along and Gandalf is evil. You wanna bet? You wanna bet that's what's gonna happen? That it's gonna be complicated and the Gandalf guy is all nice? He's gonna be a freaking evil person? He's gonna figure out later on what he really is and he's evil? I bet you my freaking backbone. I swear, like this, this is what always happens. So I wouldn't be surprised. Let's see how many episodes it's gonna take before we get that reveal. Anyway, what'd you guys think about this? Who's your favorite character? I hope Halbrand kills everyone. In the beginning. In the... In the beginning, in the beginning, yeah, in the beginning, in the beginning, yeah, in the beginning, in the beginning, in the beginning.